this. Can you reach the one? As long as I hold it up here, you get above the bubble. Wow, he's gotten a little testy since I missed a couple of Sundays. I'm back. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. series continues tonight at 6 o'clock. This ought to be interesting. Session 5's topic is homosexuality and transgenderism. Why don't we talk about that already? Anyway, next one. Oh, this Ooh, got quiet, didn't it? When you read that? Yeah, that's, really. that's the rest. That's the right one. That's good. Uh, business meeting August the 9th at 6.30. Uh, We've got two things to talk about. Mission support adjustments and a vote of confirmation for Mr. Chris Stack as a deacon. So if you'd like to be part of that, I'm sure he would appreciate your vote. Powell Support Group meets Thursday, August the 10th at 6.30. Central Students Water Day on Friday, August 11th at 11 a.m. What does that mean? I don't know because on the same day is Central Kids Back to School Splash Bash. Say that 10 times real quick. On the 11th, but that's at 5.30 at the Merrill's house. <coughs> Hamburgers and hot dogs provided. Please RSVP by August the 9th. I'm, I'm sure that doesn't include us. I would, it says kids, I hope not. <coughs> not people that act like kids. I thought well, that was that family. It says yeah. kids and their family. Oh, okay. Uh, back to school promotion Sunday is August the 13th. That's where everybody's making a step up. Yeah, we only got one more step to go. I'm prepared, but I'm just not ready. Uh, anniversary luncheon honoring the Kaler family. Five years of service at Central, immediately after church, Sunday, August the 20th, in the fellowship hall. There's going to be food. It says luncheon. <laughs> I'm just making sure. Okay. Um, Singspiration Praise and Worship Service is Sunday, August the 20th at 6. If you'd like to share your musical gift with the church, please see Pastor Taylor. Circle Up Prayer at Deepwater Junior High, Sunday, August the 27th at 6 p.m. And then there's going to be a special screening of a movie called What Is It? on Wednesday, September the 6th at 6.30, and that will be in the sanctuary not in the fellowship hall. So don't forget about Thursday. It's on the top of the list. This is coming Thursday. Oh. Everybody that wants to eat at Sudi's, we're meeting over there, I believe, at 6 o'clock. Mm -hmm. uh, we're just going to order off the menu. Um, I, I, don't, I, don't, I have no idea what those folks are going to do when a bunch of us show up, old people show up and want to eat. Um, we, just by sheer mass they may put us in a, another room by ourselves that just forced their hand <laughs> um, I, I'm, I'm gonna try to remember i use the word try to remember to give them a call ahead of time and just give them a heads up because uh y'all know how we are they, they need i mean honestly they need fair warning i would think <laughs> if if never mind yeah <laughs> uh, um <laughs> I was going to mention uh, that we need to pray for Drusilla, but she showed up today. Must be doing a lot better. I'm going to tell, tell you right now, if, if there's some advice that I could give you, do not mess with Drusilla. I think she could probably hurt you. I mean, bad, bottom line, she's tough. I was going to tell you, pray for Brad. He needs it, no doubt about it. Uh, and then Drake's going in the 10th, which is Thursday. Yeah. I made sure we, we did the studious thing on Thursday so so uh, Rusty couldn't be there. 
Uh, <laughs> I mean, you know, um, obviously Rusty's putting off what he needs to do so he can get Drake in there and get that. It's it's foot in. They're gonna do more than just his foot. Is that right? Right. There'd be uh, actually two surgeons. That's the reason it took so long to get him in. Mm -hmm. One that will be going in his back and clipping some nerves. Mm -hmm. and, so they're going to go in just about here and clip some tendons because his foot points down. They're going to try to get where they come back up and then they're going to go in and put some cadaver bones in to try to make it an arch mm -hmm. in his foot. And we've been waiting a long time to get these two doctors together. So that's where I, I want to put mine off <laughs> and get his first. Between seven and ten hours. Oh, yeah. Wow. Um, we have some. We have some um, new class class people in here. I'm not going to say they're members yet or members of our class yet. Uh, we'll give them the same thing. And they'll. I would say. I would tell y'all. Let's act nice. I know. <laughs> there's, there's no point saying nothing. They've already seen what they got to see so far. Uh, Carol and Emily, Emily still back there. They, we hadn't run them off yet. So. <laughs> it's a, it's good stuff. Um, um, anybody, Becky, I saw your hand go up. My sister Donna's having a test tomorrow at 12. Just lift her up in prayer, please. How you doing? I'm doing okay. So I'm working That translates she's taking it, is what that is. But I, the, I, the, I'm doing okay just means it's the same thing that we all do. It's like, hey, I'm okay. It hurts. It's not comfortable and it's no fun, but hey, we're doing okay. <laughs> it is what it is. It is I'm, what it is. You know what? I'm, I'm really getting kind of tired of that is what it is thing. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's like we're compromising. <laughs> I don't even no, know. No, it is what it is. It just means you have no control over it. No, yeah, there's, we have no control over that. Um, anybody else? Yeah, Go ahead. He was talking. He can go first. He always talks. We always talk. William. Let me pray for William. Okay. He's, he's fighting the kidney and, and uh, bladder infection. Good. That ain't good. Rusty. Mm -hmm. I, I was just going to ask if anybody's heard anything from Betty Flanagan. I, she wasn't here last week, I don't think. No. She's having stomach issues this morning. Oh, okay. She said if she feels better, she'll be in church. Okay. <coughs> I'm, I'm going to leave that alone. Um, I mean, she might be the same problem all of us have every night. She might have a bad case, bad case of St. Mattress. You never know. I see. I see. Go ahead, Larry. Uh, I've got a prayer request for a friend named Brett Jones. Brett's been having issues with uh, his health and it's cancer related. Uh, he thought he was doing okay, and then they found a small spot on his brain. And then they kind of got rid of that. And Mama asked me about that one time when it was, that cancer was just about to get her. She goes, like, I said, she goes, what did I do wrong? And I looked at her and said, you didn't do anything wrong. It's just called life. It's, it's called life. And it's, heck, it's, it's all about, it's, it's all about how you handle it. And, and you know, like Becky just mentioned about Becky, hey, you do what you got to do. Uh, and then let the good Lord take care of all the rest of it. Because he will one way or the other. It just may not be the way we want it done. You want to pray for us? You don't have to see it. You don't have to be able to see it, do we? <laughs> I, know, I should have my eyes closed. I, I, I said that. But I wrote a few names down there. Well, if you, I can't read it. Look at them with your right eye. You got a right eye that works. No, I can't read your writing. <laughs> <laughs> that rude. That rude. You know good way to read that. <laughs> Just wanted to mouth off. Go ahead. Gracious Heavenly Father, please help us. <laughs> Father, thank you for today and thank you for the ability that you've given us to come together and learn more about your word and get closer to you in community, Lord. That's what you intended for us to do anyway. 
Father, be with uh, be with us today as we as we cover these verses and, and give us the words to say that, that need to be said and open up the minds and hearts of those in the class that they can hear and understand what we're trying to say. I know sometimes, Lord, words are hard to follow, but give them, give them that ability. Lord, we pray for those that we've lifted up to you this morning that needing prayer. I don't remember all of them, Lord, but you know them all. You know their needs and you know their, what they need, what they want. Lord, be with them. Be with their families as, as they go through this stage of, of, of their life. Father, we, we love you. We need you in our life. We thank you for everything you've given us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Um, Les, would you... Would you, you, got to, you, you I hadn't put anything up here. Yeah, go ahead. I'm not going to follow the guidelines. So, um, Les, would you read the first three verses of chapter 12? Please, Romans chapter 12. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but ye transform by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what that, that good, and acceptable, and perfect will of God. One more. For I say, through the grace given unto me to every man, So, um, if 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 you looked at the lesson, um, I'm a, I'm gonna be around it. I'm gonna be in it and around it and talk about it. But there's some there's some things that's in our lesson in our in our book that uh, was kind of new to me that I, I hadn't thought about. Um, Kim, would you look at First Corinthians six? 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20. Emily, would you look at Ephesians 4, 23 and 30? Ephesians 4, 23 and 30. Um, so th th those verses there... Um, I was telling Brad, and Brad, Brad knows, I guess if he could read it. Uh, the preacher sends out a text message to, to us, a couple of groups, uh, every day. And so today he sent out one that uh, he was reading, the, the verses were in Mark, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and he just makes a comment, a couple of the verses that he read, it just, it just uses the word at least four times, again and again and again and again. And the verses that he talked about is that it says that Jesus went out and taught the crowd again. And he went out and spoke to the crowd again. And what, he's, what, what the point the preacher was driving home was is he never complained when they would ask him the same thing and he would teach them again. And it, it, it never made him it never made him back up. He was willing to just he just keeps teaching us because I guess, I guess, because we keep repeating our same sins over and over and over again. I know I'm the only one in class that does that. He just keeps reminding us again and again. And I, I, I laughed at myself because I, I, I've said it to Brad. I've even said it to y'all. It's like, here we go. This, this is the same lesson again. And this is the same lesson again. But I did see a couple of things. Um... And I didn't necessarily maybe give y'all those verses in the order that I want them in or wanted them, would like them in. But Emily, if you would read, if you want to read Ephesians 4.23 to us, and if you feel like you want to add a verse before or after, I'm good with that. And then read 30 last, if you don't mind, please, ma'am. 23 starts with, and to be renewed in the spirit of your mind. So, two things. 
verse 30 tells us that we can make the Holy Spirit mad. They use the term grieve, but we can make him mad. And when we make him mad, what does he do? What does he do? He tries to correct us. I use the word try. He will correct us. The problem is, are we correctable? And, and again, and we've said it a thousand times, for some reason, I can't keep it together sooner or later. The verse before in verse 24, 23, Paul tells us one more time to renew our minds. It's a constant thing. And, it, and it's, y'all work with me here. As, as we get older, it seems to be harder and harder to do for me. And, and you know, I think that's, and, and, and y'all speak up, I think that's kind of a two-way thing. When I say it seems to be harder, it just seems to be more frequent than it ought to be. <clears throat> but the bottom line is, is when we hit, our, we hit the age that we are, we should know better, right? And you say, well, the kids should know better than to do what they do. But you got to keep doing it, keep spanking them or telling them over and over again. Hey, guess what? We're just older kids. But the, Paul, the, the whole thing here, it, in the first three verses that we read, something I thought was pretty good. It says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Does, so th this is not a trick question. This is something that we've been, hear we've been hearing and we've been hearing and with that we should, we should know to do. <coughs> is there anything, anything in our minds is, is, is there a couple of things that God requests from us to do? We don't have to do anything to be saved. We just merely, we just simply need to ask and believe. But after we're saved, is there something that he asks us? I'm, you know what? I'm going to be harder on it. Is there something, a couple of things for sure that he, and there's probably more than just a couple, that he requires of us? I'll give you a hint on the first one. It starts with faith. <laughs> what, he requires, what does he require us to do? Be faithful. Have do faith. what, Steve? Be faithful. Oh, I'm sorry, Kevin. What was you back there? Be faithful. <laughs> There's one other thing that he only, he only requires <laughs> us to do. Does he expect us to go out and save the world? No, but we're supposed to go out and tell the world. We're supposed to. That's another requirement. We're supposed to go out and tell, tell the world. When we, as Christians, what are we required to do? We're requ and, and preachers said this more than once over the last few weeks. We're, we're required to stand. Stand our ground. We, he, all we need to do is stand. With the, the battle is not ours, right? It's his. But stand the ground. Stand your place. Stay where you're supposed to be. Be faithful. One of the things that I looked at um, that word beseech, there's a couple of definitions in, in our study guide, the definition that, of our study guide that he, he gave two things. It's, it's to come alongside, and, and uh, the one I caught the most to me was to come alongside. Does that sound like something else? When, it's, when it says to come alongside someone, what is that a form of? There's, there's a, the, okay, when you come alongside someone, which means you're walking with them, there's the business term for that, and then there's the Bible term for that. What are, what are those two terms? Am I asking the questions even close to right? It's like, I mean, it's everybody's just sitting there looking. Don't let me forget what I just said. <laughs> I asked for two things. I'm, let me go ahead and do it. Sure, I'm going to remember that. <laughs> In the business world, that would be called a mentor. Y'all with me? We're on the same page now. In the, in, in, the, in the biblical world, what's that called? Discipleship. Discipleship. So when we come alongside of somebody, it's not, number one is to introduce them to what we're supposed to be doing, introduce them to Christ. Holy Spirit does work after that. We, we give them. 
We tell them, I think Becky said a minute ago, we're supposed to tell them about it. The Holy Spirit does the rest. It, it, we can't get them saved. All we can do is plant the seed. Plant, and then plant the seed. But the hard part for us is to walk alongside. Do you ever stop walking alongside somebody? Vance, go ahead, Emily. I'm sorry, you go ahead if you don't mean to. No, no, no. I was, Becky said something. I was going to respond there, but then I saw your head go up. Well, okay, so this is what I'm thinking. I know this is going to sound funny, but the mind is a dangerous place. It's, okay. it's a terrible thing. And so when you're not involved, just say, okay, I stopped working in the school district, okay? Well, once I did that, then I got to be home alone with God and just do my little thing and go to Bible study and go to church. And so, but the world kept going. So I'm in, a, I'm in another job now. Okay, so my mind has to be renewed and I have to really walk close with God, really watch and make sure I'm clear of sin so I can hear from the Holy Spirit because I've got to get my game on because things have happened. And there's things that are foreign around me. And in order to walk alongside and share the gospel, I have got to, I have got to be able to hear from the Holy Spirit. So I, I've got to take my thought captive and I have to um, confess sin and, and renew my mind. Because your bank first thought, what do you do? Why are you doing that? Or where are you going? And, you know, you question, you know, because you know what's like correct or right, but people like people are doing things different, different than God would have them do. And so you have to be able to speak to them in order to be able to mentor them or disciple them, or even share a little bit of gospel. Like you wouldn't believe what I've gotten out of this class that I could go in and I I am I am like majorly planting, hoping to bring someone back. So, so a couple of things I'm hearing, uh, similar. Like I retired, I retired at 57. I, I'm seven, fixed to be 71. I've been retired for a while. I, every now and then I'll drive by one of the plants and I'll think, boy, I, I, that was like another life ago. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, a, a couple of things, Becky. When I said, "Did you ever quit walking alongside of anybody?" You said you shook your head, yeah. The reason so, why I say that is. If you're mentoring and discipling and they don't ever get on the same page as you are, and you can see, you don't quit praying for them, but you can see no matter what you're doing, they're not going to follow what you have tried to teach them. So, well, what did Jesus said? He said, if they won't listen to your word, dust off your feet. Shake the dust off your feet. Shake the dust off your feet. Shake the dust off your feet. And turn around and walk away. Yeah. It's not easy. Well, and like you said, you don't just because you quit working with them doesn't mean you quit praying for them. There, you there's, pray for the seed to take hold. There, there's people, and we've talked about this in other lessons. There's people that you could come alongside of, and you could share the gospel with, and they're con they're going to completely refuse it. Do, do we quit praying for them? No, not no, absolutely. There's people that are going to like you know, uh, but so again, we can't do that. What we do is my my thought was so you get it you get in, in our in our so I went to a cl two classes yesterday. Daphne and I went to them. Um, it was I should have brought my notes with me. I, I, I knew I knew that there was no way that I wasn't gonna sit in here and talk about that today. Bottom line was is this, the first class was okay. Um, Billy's not here. He was in he was in both classes with me, um, and me and Daphne, and, and Art was in one of them. The first class was okay. The second class was, I mean, one hundred percent, absolutely phenomenal. And I, I know that Daphne, I believe her sheet to fill out was blank. I filled mine in, but the class was it was directed for fifty five year old and. 55 year plus people and when I got in there the, the man broke it down really really well he talked about the builder generation the boomer generation and Gen X and not to 
I can't remember the age of the builder. That's the first group. There's not a lot of those people alive anymore. But there's we're we're in the boomer generation. And we're seeing some of the builder, all of the boomer, and some of the Gen X. And the next thing that's coming if the good Lord leads us here. The the whole thing that he presented was is there's a couple of things. Number one that he said, and I'm not real sure about this, but he said we don't like to be called seniors and we don't like to be called elderly. Does anybody take exception to either one of those? Uh, I thought I fall hard to get here. I'm, I, I told I, I didn't raise my hand and correct him, and y'all don't I know y'all don't believe that, but I didn't say a word in that class yesterday. I don't think. Um, I didn't. I did not. You could ask her. I didn't say anything. The only thing I thought about is like, dude, I, that doesn't bother me at all. But I had a guy sitting on my left hand side, and what what he did say that bothers me is all of a sudden whatever we're doing. We get shoved out of doing it and somebody else does start doing it. Now, that, that doesn't mean nothing. That just means we need to find something else to do. I said, I, I'm saying all that. I, Emily, to me, just for me just then, just, she just laid it out right there. I, I, Y'all can help me with this. Maybe I, maybe I said it wrong when I looked it up. Maybe I can't type in what I really need to type in. But when I was looking at the lesson this week and when I kind of re reviewed what I had today, a verse kept popping in my mind. It's, Paul says somewhere, I die to my sins daily. Does that sound right to y'all? I mean, I, and, 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 and it's, it's yes. It's survival. That's why you got to put on the whole armor of God every single, every single day. day. Every, well, it's, it's, every not a, day. It's, not a, it's not a one and done thing. It's, it's, she, you got to get your mind right every day. Every day, you got to put the armor on. Every day, you got to realize that if, if I am not going to make it through the in that first verse, I beseech you, therefore, brethren. I want to throw a couple things at y'all real quick. I didn't. I, I'm going to give you the verses. If you want to look them up, that's fine and dandy, like cotton candy, whatever. Don't go there. Oh. <clears throat> there so there's a comment when I looked at when I looked at Wearsby to look at the lesson. He gave me the very first paragraph of, the, of these verses with the word beseech. He gave me four things that I think are pretty neat. In Romans, in Romans 3.20, you see that word in there, I beseech you, therefore, brethren. What's the, we, hear, we heard it the last two Sunday evenings or the last two Wednesdays. That when you see wherefore or therefore, you're supposed to look and see what it's therefore. Yeah. So, <clears throat> where's the get me this? In Romans 3.20, the word therefore is used in, verse, in Romans 3.20. And, it's, and it says it's condemnation of the whole world. That term in verse 20 says, therefore, everybody's a sinner. Is that true? Yeah. Yep. We're born lost. We, we, we're, we're, we are, and, and listen, the younger generation... They don't necessarily disagree with that concept. They just have a hard time dealing with it. Okay? We do too. Uh, Romans 5.1. They have a hard time dealing with it because they think God is love and God loves everybody. God, what, does, God does love everybody. Okay. What was that? Uh, I think last Wednesday or last Sunday, the, the misuse, a lot of words, love is love. Not necessarily. <laughs> what you going to say? No, I just said, uh, emphasizing her point, God does love you. Absolutely. If he didn't love you, he, he wouldn't put up with the fact that you are a sinner. What do, what do, I forget where it's at, but what does it say? If you say you're not a sinner, you're a liar. That's in First John. And you're, in First John, you're a liar and you're lying to God. If he didn't love us, he wouldn't have died for us. That's exactly, exactly right. He, did he die for everybody? Yes. He died so for these, everybody. These whole verses, especially these first ones, is, is saying, listen, he died for you. He gave up. He was beat and and stabbed, and he died for you. The very least we can do is worship him and talk about him for what for what he did for us. That's the very least we can do. You might want to write something down. I'm sorry, I'm. The younger, it hasn't been preached about. God is love. God is love. God is love. But there's more to it. He doesn't so, love sin. 
So our preacher's probably on the right page preaching about some things he's preaching about because the stuff that he's been preaching about, I wish William was here. That it. it's it's not it's not normal in a, in a Baptist church. Well, like you said, the builders were my parents. That's I right. Been in church since I was six days old. Not always faithfully as I got older, but I was there, and they taught me that church was important. I tried to instill that into my own children or their generation. God, I did a pretty good job. They don't go that way. No one always did. But now, because of that, her children, church is not even on their radar to go to church. Good. That's just what's so sad. But the thing is, the first thing something dramatic you know, well, happens in their life. They call me and say, no, no, pray, pray for this, pray for that. I'm going, you can pray just like I can, but I will. So, so Becky, this, this guy talked about that yesterday. And, 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 he all, and, I, and I love the way he, his name was Michael Clayton. And I love the way he presented it because he always said he would say what you said and then the, the way they respond to it. And he said, that doesn't mean it's wrong. It's just a different age group. And, and I, 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 he's, they, the guy in the first class and the guy in the second class, they both made, made statements that I, that, I, golly, that I extremely love. The ministry, never, the, the gospel does not change, Amen. period. It doesn't change. The methodology to present the gospel, it might. But so does it does it matter as long as it's correct not the correct gospel? <laughs> it it matters if it's not correct. If it's it matters if it's not correct. But does the teaching or the presenting of the gospel, as long as it's correct, does it matter if the methods are different? No, no. no. It's it, it's not. It, different people have different things. That's like. You talked about again and again and again and again and again. That's adult learning. That's right. Adult learning is you have to repeat. If I'm teaching a class, there's things I have to repeat a minimum of four times. And doing things over and over and over again, and the Lord working with you over and over and over again, what's that called? It's a process. Process of sanctification. sanctification. That's what these verses are telling us. By the grace of God, we've been saved. He died for us. The least we can do is worship Him, talk about Him, and do our level best to try to be like Him every day. And He'll help you get more and more that way every day if you'll let Him. Amen. Okay, let me give you these real quick. 320 was condemnation, a therefore of condemnation. Romans 5, 1 is a therefore of justification. Romans 8, 1 is a therefore of assurance. And then uh, Romans 12, 1 is what we just read is a therefore of dedication. There, y- y'all just threw out a whole bunch of stuff um, that I wish that, that, that I, that here's what ran through my mind. It's a constant, that word, that word beseech is to come alongside, that we've talked about this before. And Emily, Emily alluded to this. Let me, I have another source of information when I study the study Bible. Verse 12, 1, is, it, that, that is considered a form of walking in the Spirit, okay? So you can't walk in the Spirit. We've talked about this a hundred times. You can't walk in the Spirit unless you yield to the Spirit, which means if you yield to the Spirit, it's basically a renewing of your mind and position that you're in every single day. I mean, there we there is none of us that can do and stay in the right mind and the right step. We're not Jesus. How many? How many? And we've talked about this before. How many times have you read a verse a second time and got something totally different out of it the second time you read it than the first, or a third time, or, or a, a third time. time, or a fourth time? Yes, sir. <clears throat> I think if we look at these two in a completeness. You look in the beginning, he's beseeching, he's begging. He's begging. Who is he begging? He's begging brethren. This is these are safe people. He's talking to brethren. He's talking to safe people. You go to the end, and how many times you hear people, I don't know what God's will is. What is God's will? 
This is very, giving you a very simple explanation. It says the, uh, the acceptable and perfect will of God. He's, t there, he's telling you what God's will is. And this will is the basis of the pure, simplest form of what God wants. And from this, you can get the answer to what God wants for you in your life. And what is it? It is that you surrender by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, separated, holy, you know, separated, separate yourselves, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, reasonable service. We all can understand that phrase. It's reasonable for him to expect that from a person he's just saved. So, so before, you, you said something that I, I, that I wanted to talk about too. So, one, and I, I guess I didn't read it. Did we read? Kim, did you read verses? No. Go ahead. Why? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. So, I, I, we, we got to wrap it up. I wanted Kim to read those verses because it follows right in line with what Danny was saying. It also follows in line with Becky and Emily's been talking about. Don't we know who's living inside of us? When we take him places we shouldn't go, we make him complicit, okay? Complicit. And he's going he's to correct us. <clears throat> We're a living... Y'all know, know the deal. In the Old Testament, they had to take all kinds of sacrifices, birds, lambs, sheep, whatever, all, all these things to, to get sanctified, to get cleared up, to be, be, to be right with God. We had a guy, we had a guy, we had a person in the Christ, all man, died on a cross, shed his blood for us to help us get to where we need. We no longer have to sacrifice anything other than our body. It's a living temple. It says we should sacrifice ourselves daily. And when we say sacrifice, that means give in to the perfect will of God, which he explained. Danny read it. He explains to us. If you don't know by now what your gift is, you're not asking the right question. Okay? We all have a gift. We all have a role to play. We got to stop. Um, one verse and you ask what God wants us to do. And this verse pops in my head. It's um, that last verse you read. It, it, it's, it's just reasonable. That's all he asks. Stand, pray, be faithful, be share. separate, separate from the world. Well, yeah, separate, be, separate from the world. Yeah, and you know, Emily even said it. She said it's different out there. It's supposed to be different. You're supposed to be different, and people are supposed to see you different. And understand it, and and to the point where they say, "I might want some of that." And that's what he wants. From, he wants people to see us that we're different. Yeah. Peculiar, peculiar people. Yeah. Close this, please, Danny. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for you giving us this word today. Get let allow us to understand and hear things, Father, and hear your word. Thank you for this time of fellowship together together, Lord. I ask you to watch over the further.